I love you, and you love me, and those are the facts. With that, anything's possible. Anything. Just say you'll marry me. I'd like to suggest a slight revision. Yeah, we have ten minutes without you buttoning in. I guess my timing is off. No, your timing's perfect. Every time Brooke and I have a private moment, you pop out of the woodwork. Forgive me. I'll catch you when you're done. I'm sorry. Look, I... I thought we were in the middle of something pretty important. And don't tell me this is going to knock us back to square one. It won't, will it? That wasn't just a little eruption. I think you could say safely that's a preview of coming attractions. Not if I can help it. Tad is my son's yeah, father. Yeah, he's your son's father. I got the concept down pat. Please, Brooke, can we concentrate on something besides Tad for five seconds? You just made this very moving speech about how once we're married, we're going to face the future together. We're going to deal with our problems sanely and calmly. Was that you? I'm not sure. Maybe I said we'd deal with them tomorrow. You can't joke your way out of all this, All right, Edmund. all right, all right, all right, all right. Look, what do you want, a notarized pledge of domestic bliss for the rest of our lives? For the rest of my life, Tad is going to be showing up at my door. I hope you mean our door. He has to feel free that he can come and go, that he can drop off Jamie and pick him up, that he can sit under the Christmas tree with a, a cup of eggnog and watch Jamie open his present. Fine, we can give him his own that Christmas stocking. That he can sit stocking. with me in the front row at school with recitals and graduations and concerts. What, you want his own room in the house? I'm not going to deal with an explosion every time Tad's face shows up, all right? I'm not going to marry a man who cannot accept my life the way it is. Look, there's no problem here. Yes, there is, Edmund. It's you. Oh, yeah, great. I'm just a major inconvenience in your life, Brooke. I love you to death. But I'm sure that's a real snag in your well-planned routine. It's not just love oh, that we're talking about. There are other factors in my life that I have to take into account. Yeah, other factors, like that. I never said... Brooke, I just asked you to marry me. And I expected a yes or a no. And what I got was a paragraph on the significance of Tad in your life. Don't you see it? It's real crystal clear to me. I'll see you around. before, before, uh, Edmund cut you off. Then I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Why? What happened? I don't think we should go into it. It's the, uh, forbidden subject. Right? <laughs> See? Well, I hereby waive any previous agreement. We're gonna talk about anybody's love life better yours than mine. I <laughs> See? Better me than you. Well, in that case, uh, Brian is moving back into a boarding house. Well, isn't that good news? Gloria Marsh certainly thinks so. Well, don't you? I mean, Ted, isn't this what you've been waiting for? Aren't you... Aren't you going to do something? I don't know. A few minutes ago, I was all set to call Pigeon Hollow. Then I had an all-too-familiar conversation with Hollow. Palmer thinks you and I are real smashing couples. Oh, he certainly does. It's amazing. Another life and a thriving business later, and I'm still playing some perverse kind of kitty game with my in-laws. Ted, come on. If you know it's a game, why don't you just refuse to play it? Why don't you just do something? Call Dixie. I did call her. What would I say? Hmm? Dixie, I love you. 
Let's work this out. Let's get together alone somewhere and, and, and talk this through. It works for me. No, that's just it, Brooke. It doesn't work. Because no matter how far we went, no matter where we were, we wouldn't be alone. Palmer would always be with us, whispering in her ear. Don't trust him. Don't believe in him. He was a loser. He always will be. Look, Dixie has gone up against Palmer before. Yeah, but she's never had the guts to write him off, and she never will have. Are you really going to let some crotchety old uncle stand between you and what you want? Okay, uh, by all means, let's, let's not forget about a fresh-faced, big-hearted Brian Bodine. All of a sudden, I'm supposed to see how I measure up against the Boy Scout of the Year? Yes. No, thank you very much. Come I think on. I'll pass. All right, there are so many people who are in your court who want to see you and Dixie together. Opal and Joe and Ruth. Sure, we have an Ruth. entire rooting section, an entire fan club. It's ridiculous. Forget, together, uh, forget about getting together alone somewhere. We need a stadium to play this thing out. I understand, believe me. Aunt Phoebe would love to have orchestra seats for the Brooke and Edmund Follies. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, friend, but I'm getting sick and tired of uh, love, or rather my love life as a spectator sport. So why don't you just tell Dixie that? No. No. If she wants to talk to me, she can call me. Phones work both ways. She's confused, So what? Ted. I'm confused. You're confused. What makes her distress any more valid than anybody else's? Or is it simply because she's a woman I'm supposed to roll over? Forget it. Besides, how long can she remain confused? Eventually, a person has to make a choice. And if Dixie is incapable of making some kind of firm decision, then maybe... I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to be the one to choose. Maybe the only logical choice for me is to just move on with my life. Does that make any sense at all? More than you know. Uh, excuse me, Tad, uh, for just one minute. What, what happened between you and Edmund? Why didn't you ask your brother? I, I tried. He just rushed off. To where? Uh, you tell me. He had a, a duffel bag, a portable typewriter. He ordered me to take care of Peggy, and bam, he was gone. Wouldn't say when or if he was coming back. Huh. He ran off with a duffel bag? Of course he ran off. Uh, Brooke, I'm sorry. I assumed Edmund had said something. Oh, no, he said something. He just didn't say that. I see. Look, if there's anything that I can do, I... No, Dimitri, it's fine. Brooke will be just fine. Believe me, I'll, I'll take care of it, I promise. Why don't you go inside? Dimitri, I again? am. I'm okay, really. I don't believe it. Here I am going on about Dixie and your life is falling apart. Why didn't you say something? Well, I considered having a tantrum, but I thought it would ruin my dress. Forgive me. I think you seem a little too calm. Well, falling apart didn't really appeal to me as an option. I thought you loved him. Don't you love Dixie? You know, we all have a lot of baggage, Tad, and it takes a lot more than love to haul it around. You're right. Sometimes it takes a lot of strength. And you got that in spades. I can cope with reality, you know, and to Edmund that means I'm cold. It's not true. Nola was the all-time world champion of coping with reality. And warm, you wouldn't believe it. You miss her, don't you? Every day. You know, you're looking very noble this evening. Oh, that's quite a compliment. No, that's true. The more I think about it, the more I realize my son is one lucky kid. Didn't you say something earlier about blowing this joint? That was the original idea. Yeah, But well, now I'm not so sure. Because you're having such a wonderful time here. No, no. What's the point of dressing up like Fred and Ginger unless you're going to put on a show? If you're talking about dancing, mm -hmm. really, I'm not in the mood. That's the perfect time to hit the dance floor. Dance therapy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, fun therapy. You do remember fun, don't you? Is that where you throw it back your head and laugh? <laughs> Something like that. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I think it's coming back to me from somewhere in my distant past. Things. Uh, I'm recalling words like wow and great and terrific and uh, fabulous. Well, you look fabulous. Would you do me the honor of this dance? I 
think that would be great. Fabulous. Fantastic. Terrific. I love that <laughs> well, I don't quite like the look of that. Sweetheart, Tad's alive. He's alive and he's dancing. That's all that's important. There are a few kinks still to be ironed out. Thank God he's around to do it. Huh? You're right. I mean, you are absolutely right. All right, good night, Petra. Thank you. Drive safe. So, will it be? Coffee, cocoa, tea, wine, belladonna? What about a, a look at Jamie? Sure, go ahead. I don't remember you crying that often. It's a waste of time. I don't know about that, but uh, it certainly tears me up to see you like this. Don't get caught in the crossfire, Tad. Go home. I don't think so. You have a real way, you know. Oh, for sure. I was just trying to repay the favor. After all, you are the lady that brought me back to my family and friends. Aren't you? Oh, right. And it's been an ice cream cone in the dirt for you ever since, hasn't it? I don't know about that. In any case, why, why should I run on you, uh, on you now while the chips are down? Brooke, you can cry if you want to. It's not a big deal. Go on, put one in there. Two shoulders, no waiting. Don't worry about the lapels. They're pretty shrunk. I'm, just, I'm not used to leaning on somebody's shoulder or sobbing on it. I'm really, you know, I'm used to dealing with my problems by myself. But I can get lonely. Well, if you ask Edmund, he says it's, uh, it means I'm rigid, that I'm independent to the point of being antisocial. Yeah, I would tell Edmund that he's wrong. I'd say that you're strong and that you know how to take care of yourself better than most. I'd say that you're honest, intelligent, independent. I'd tell him you're one tough cookie. And I admire that. Oh, yeah. Tough cookie, huh? Well, listen, I want to tell you something. You put a tough cookie next to it. Nice, soft, little cupcake. I can tell you which one the man will take every time. No contest. I'll take the cookie any time. Well, I guess there's just no accounting for taste, is there? Listen, if I'm such a tough cookie, then I don't need to be <clears throat> crying on somebody's shoulder, so... Anyway, um, thank you for worrying about me. But I, I really am fine. I said I was worried. I just said I was concerned. Yeah, see, I'm one of those caring, sensitive, passionate, dear old 
one in a million type guys you keep reading about. <laughs> Got you to laugh. <laughs> you're sweet. All right, terrific. I'm sweet, and you're fine. Now that we got that settled, it's perfectly obvious that neither one of us is headed towards a very good night's sleep. So why shouldn't I stay? I can order a pizza, watch a colorized black and white movie on the TV, trash our ex-lovers. Come on, it sounds like a good plan to me. I think it's a lousy plan. <laughs> but for a very good reason. It's not that I wouldn't love bearing our souls and listening to every sad record in my collection until the wee hours, but, you know, Jamie gets up with the sun and um, he doesn't care if his mother's been through the blitz, really. He wants me bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and I have to be there with those corn pups as soon as his little feet hit the floor. <laughs> you got corn pups? Doesn't sound fair, does it? I can't help you out with your blues because you've got to get up at the crack of dawn with my son. It's not a sacrifice. It's, not, it's the highlight of my day, really. I mean, he keeps me sane. He, he keeps me grounded. I, I think that, you know, being a parent really gives you a, a reality check. You have to be there. You have to be in the moment when you're with them. Sounds like a great place to be. Well, you come over one morning and I'll give you the cook's tour. It's amazing. I'm telling you all those sort of inner conversations that you have with the person who's done you wrong, they really disappear when you have the burning issue at hand. Is Jamie going to eat his toast if I don't cut off the crust? <laughs> I'd love that. I would love nothing more than to be able to negotiate my way around his life till I knew it like the back of my hand. Well, it's yours for the knowing. I think you just have to fix up that rattletrap mansion and uh, invite your son over for a sleepover. Do you think Jamie would like that? I think he'd love it. And it would be okay with you? I would get to know his dad. I want to, you know, let him know what kind of a great guy he is. He comes out in the middle of the night and rescues a damsel in distress. <laughs> yeah, who said chivalry's dead? Not I. Listen, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. What's that? The older you get, the earlier morning seems to come. Message received and noted. I get the hint. You know, something funny happened tonight when I was trying to cheer you up. What was that? I started feeling better. That makes two of us. Good night. what time it is. Past your bedtime? Precisely. A fine hour for Tad Martin to be seen coming and going. What were you doing? Hiding in the bushes? Langley and I were just coming home to the Daughters of Fine Lineage dinner dance and don't change the subject. Now what was Tad Martin doing here when decent folk are at home asleep in their beds? Well, I'm up and you're up. Was he trying to ingratiate himself with you? He doesn't have to, Aunt Phoebe. We have been friends. For a long time. Oh, it is just a shortfall from friends to lovers. Now, if he was trying to press his advantage... And Phoebe, you, I... listen to me. Tad, Martin, and I are old friends, and he can come here anytime he wants to, whether it's to see me or my son or any combination thereof. Do we have that? Oh, Brooke, you don't need to remind me that, that he's Tad's son. I just thank to heaven daily that, that, he, that Tad's genes were recessive and that Jamie... Takes after you. It's late. All right. I don't want to discuss genetics with you or Tad or the man in the moon, really. I just, I'm going to bed. Oh, Ed, wait a minute. What, what about Edmund? 
Edmund is responsible for making his own sleeping arrangements. Oh, you know what I mean. Brooke, men are territorial animals. They don't like it when another male invades their turf. Now, how in the name of heaven are you and Edmund supposed to get back together again when Tad Martin camps out here every waking hour of the day? You don't have to worry about Edmund. Edmund walked out of my life tonight with the promise never to darken my door again, and then he lit out for parts unknown. Oh, Brooke, I'm sorry. You must be devastated. No, I'm not. In fact, I'm fine. I have gotten along perfectly well by myself this far. I will just get up tomorrow morning and do it again with no help from anyone. Oh. You're making me nervous. Now, you and Tad Martin have absolutely nothing in common. We have Jamie in common. And that is certainly nothing to regret, and neither is my friendship with Tad. Now, I think you just better go back up to the house. Oh, you're furious with me, aren't you? Actually, I'm not. The way that my life has been going lately, I can't really afford to alienate anybody. Not even you. Oh, thank you, I think. I love you. You know that I do. You just have to accept the fact that Edmund is out of my life. And Tad is back in it as my friend and as Jamie's father. And if you're going to be a part of my life, you're going to have to accept that. Good night.